I, I, I take full responsibility. <laughs> no, I take zero responsibility. The team that's been putting DevConf together is, is fantastic, and I'm sure they're very tired. But we really appreciate it. So um, I have 20 minutes or so to talk to you about Linux in cars and what is going on with Linux in cars. So I put Tux in the chat. Um, this is going to be very similar to um, some other talks that I've given recently. So if you've seen one of those, you can feel free to go to sleep. Uh, try not to snore because it might disrupt others. And otherwise, we're just going to talk about uh, about Linux and cars. Why auto why the automotive industry is going through the transition that it's going through. Um, and then uh, some of the things that Red Hat is in the middle of doing to address that. Uh, we will talk a little bit about automotive grade Linux, uh, which is a, uh, a project through the Linux Foundation. Uh, Red Hat is a member, but we are not active in the project. Uh, we are pursuing a kind of a different avenue, which we'll, we'll talk a little bit about. We'll talk about the CentOS Automotive SIG, which is a special interest group within CentOS that uh, is where a lot of the work is being done, a lot of the sausage is being made to create a, a Linux-based software-defined vehicle. And um, then we'll talk about what the, the CentOS Automotive SIG provides and, and where it's going. All that kind of stuff. So first of all, why automotive at all? Why is Linux interesting to the automotive industry? So the industry is going through a transition right now. And um, nobody in the industry really wants to say, but it really has been driven by the proof of concept known as Tesla because they came onto the scene and showed everybody that you could do things a little bit differently. And um, the, so these are some ideas that have actually been batted around long before Tesla existed. Um, the main idea here is with a software-defined vehicle, which is similar in concept to software-defined networking and other software-defined things. Um, that is a term that is being used much more heavily in many industries because they're seeing that it, is, it, can, it can save a whole lot of time and it can make systems a whole lot more flexible to be software defined rather than to be defined by physical objects or hardware. Um, the main concept is consolidating workloads down from having many different computers in a car. Um, as you can see on the little picture on the left with all the little red signs, um, that's just a representation. A modern BMW or Audi has easily 120 different individual systems. And the main issue with these systems is that they don't necessarily talk to each other. They have some access to information over the CAN bus, but otherwise they are not interconnected in the way that we think of, of computer interconnections today, as far as a network is concerned. Um, the, um, so one of the benefits that you get by consolidating all of these workloads, if you think of each one of those individual electronic control units, or ECUs, as a workload, you can contain that workload, the compute part of it anyway, in a container or in a virtual machine and have, it, have many of them running on one larger machine that you have full control over and can do all kinds of interesting things on. You could do over-the-air updates on it, for example. So that's, as a concept that's being batted, been batted around for a long time, there have been other open source projects in this area. Uh, one that has been around for about 10 years is Project Acorn. From, it was a, an Intel project, and it currently only works on x86. Uh, it's now a Linux Foundation project, and it's a hypervisor specific to automotive. Um, so um, so those, those things have been around. Automotive-grade Linux has been around as a Linux Foundation project since, I believe, 2013. Um, if anybody's, feel free to correct me on that. Everybody in the front row can correct me. Um, so uh, the other concept that is, um, that is really uh, uh, important here is the connected car. Treating the vehicle as a, a device in a larger world within a network as opposed to being a discrete single vehicle that has to make all of its own decisions and do everything on its own. Um, so uh, as the world continues to develop vehicles or a, a cloud to edge, technology. If you think of the cloud as an edge device, then suddenly a lot of these things, a lot of microservices, for example, become uh, uh, available that weren't available before. So, um, this is also referred to in many industries, particularly in automotive and manufacturing, as the consolidation of IT and OT, where OT is operational technology as opposed to information technology. And so combining these two things is very powerful. 
the, uh, the industry response to these ideas, and it has really been a movement uh, that has really gained a lot of traction, no pun intended, over the last few years, um, is uh, partly to form some communities because that is one of the things that um, automotive companies are very good at doing is forming consortiums. Normally, the consortiums that they form are closed. The, the ones that we are very interested in, of course, being Red Hat, are the ones that are open. And uh, I will talk with about a few of these as we go. I do want to make sure to keep a close eye on the time. But um, um, the main ones that we participate in are uh, the Eclipse Software Defined Vehicle Project. It is a sort of an umbrella under which about 27 different projects, uh, all related to various aspects of automotive software, are contained. Uh, Eclipse SDV tends to be very focused on middleware and the support of applications as opposed to the applications themselves. So you won't necessarily go in and find you know, an automotive uh, application there. What you'd find is the middleware that you would run on that application. And uh, there is a basic operating system uh, project there called uh, Eclipse Lida, uh, just as there is in another project that we'll talk about in a moment called Sophie is a, another a software. And these are base embedded embedded systems, embedded Linux uh, operating systems. They literally are just Linux kernel running with uh, an, a container orchestration system on the top of it. Um, that's not what Red Hat is up to. <laughs> so we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, the other really interesting thing is new hardware. I heard uh, just uh, toward the end there was a question about uh, RISC-V in automotive and whether that was going to be an issue. Uh, I, it will be an issue very soon. It is not a uh, not currently an issue because there's very little hardware available uh, in that space. But uh, if you go to risk5.org, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm also I gave a risk five talk earlier. <laughs> if you go to risk5.org, you can find uh, there is an automotive um, uh, report that was written by Andy Moore at Risk Five Foundation for Risk Five International, and uh, it talks a lot about some of these issues and and the uh, patterns trends that they are seeing in the automotive industry. Uh, there's also a brand new fab that has just broken ground in Germany as a uh, joint operation between NXP, Bosch, um, TSMC is part of it. Uh, they are going to be making automotive chips out of, with RISC-V cores. That's their entire operation in Europe. This is in Germany. Um, and that's that's a brand new thing. That's uh, it, There are very few fabs other than Intel fabs that have been built outside of China in the last 10 or 15 years. So let's continue on. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about AGL. AGL is the uh, essentially the, the groundbreaking project from the Linux Foundation that first brought the Linux into cars. I'm, I consider it to be foundational. Um, I'm very familiar with the, um, the folks who started it. Uh, at the time, I was running a project called the Yocto Project that is the basis of automotive-grade Linux. And it's essentially a build, a customizable build process for embedded Linux operating systems. Uh, AGL has been adopted by Toyota, Suzuki, Subaru. You'll notice these are mostly Japanese car companies, but um, it actually has shipped in those in those uh, in some cars in those from those companies. Uh, one, there were a couple of interesting things about AGL is that they are really approaching the problem from the point of view of the way that the automotive industry works today which is treating each, ob each individual ECU as an individual discrete machine. And um, that's the difference, really, between the way that AGL approaches things, which is perfectly valid, and I honestly feel like there's a great deal of, uh, of opportunity for collaboration between uh, the embedded style and the SVV style, the, the new fashion that is coming, coming through. Um, and uh, we hope to continue discussing this with AGL to see if we can make sure to, to get, a, get Linux into every aspect of the car, because it's all connected. Um, so what, I, what I really want to talk mostly about, though, is software-defined vehicle, because that is a, uh, uh, it's a, very, it's a very interesting, very, very interesting uh, new thing. So um, these are some of the projects and open source ventures that Red Hat participates in. This, this essentially is a, a, a laundry list of the, of the places where automotive software is happening in the open source world. So uh, we talked a bit about Eclipse SDV. Sophie is a project within ARM. 
it's actually uh, contained by and funded by ARM Limited. Uh, they, they call it Scalable Open Architecture for Embedded Edge. It is really tightly focused on automotive and enabling um, ARM uh, standards within the, uh, within the automotive industry, particularly system ready assets. Uh, Sophie is, so their, their goal is essentially to create a reference architecture. And they're doing that both in code and as a standard set of documents. And uh, we've been participating in that since it launched publicly in, uh, two and a half years ago. Uh, Covisa, the Co Connected Vehicle Systems Alliance, has been actually around since about 2009, I think. Uh, it used to be called Genevi, if, you're, if anybody's familiar with that term. Um, Genevi was, uh, let's just say it, it didn't produce a whole lot as Genevi, but the entire uh, organization went through a rebranding and a refactorization in about three years ago. And now as Covisa, they are uh, very active. Uh, they've got hun many hundreds of members, and they maintain the connected vehicle specifications. So if you're talking about connections, uh, interconnects between devices in the car or between the car and the outside world, uh, like, for example, cloud to edge, then these are the folks you want to be, you want to talk to. ELISA is a very active uh, project that's been around for about 15 years. Uh, it's in enabling Linux in safety applications. So this is where functional safety work is done on behalf of the Linux kernel. Uh, I've been a member of ELISA um, as an individual through three different jobs now. And uh, it's a, just a great group of people. Uh, what we do is safety analysis of various aspects of whatever it is, cars, medical devices. There's working groups for a number of different things. There's now even an, auto, uh, an aerospace working group within ELISA. And um, this safety analysis gives us clues as to what kinds of work needs to be done in the Linux kernel to make it be able to achieve functional safety functional safety specific, uh, certification at some point. Um, certification is very difficult, as anybody who's ever gone through the process will tell you. Um, I don't know, I believe our next talk is going to be about uh, freedom from interference in, in this room. It's going to be about freedom from interference, which is part of the safety plan in, uh, in automotive. So I will let them talk about that, because I am not even close to being a safety expert. Uh, Red Hat also participates in the International Standards Organization. ISO 26262 is the functional safety standard that every, every piece of uh, automotive software must conform to. And um, we are members of the organization. We're part of a, uh, an update process that's going on right now and has been going on for a while. Um, let's see, some of these others, let's see. AutoSemo is an organization in China that is made up of a bunch of Chinese automotive manufacturers and suppliers. Uh, we were on a World Economic Forum task force. It was very interesting about trying to understand what this whole universe looks like and, and how people can participate. And then AutoWare, which I kind of saved close to the last. AutoWare is very interesting. AutoWare is a, an application. It is a, they have an open autonomous driving kit that is used uh, throughout uh, a number of different uh, companies who are using this to demonstrate automated driving and autonomous driving technology for their various chips or middleware or whatever. Uh, we support AutoWare uh, within the CentOS Automotive SIG up there at the top. Um, we support uh, AutoWare uh, by containerizing it, and we've been members of the project now for a while. So it's, it's a literally a containerized application that can run on top of an automotive operating system. Um, SDV Alliance, I can just briefly go over it. SDV Alliance is not a formal, doc, a formal organization that you could join. It's actually the, a, an ongoing discussion between Eclipse SDV, SOFI, COVISA, and another standards group called AutoSAR that's used throughout the industry. So, looks like we've actually talked, about, talked through quite a few of these slides already, which is great. Um, these slides will be available, so if anybody wants to take a look at them, you're more than welcome. Um, just uh, see me afterwards, or I think that the slides are the slides will be available on the DevConf site. Yeah, okay, good. So um, about three years ago, Red Hat started down this journey for auto to create automotive, and we talked about the Red Hat in vehicle operating system at the last talk. Uh, the way that Red Hat does this, as it does everything, is by doing this development in the public as much as possible, and so we felt that the 
most appropriate place to do this was within CentOS. Um, CentOS kind of sits between Fedora as the very fast-moving uh, edge, you know, tip of the tip of the iceberg, with 20, 23,000 packages. Uh, CentOS has many fewer packages, and they go through quite a, a process in order to be boiled down into what we consider to be enterprise-grade software. So we felt this was a great place to locate a special interest group on automotive and create an automotive operating system. It uses mostly CentOS components, uh, so they are uh, essentially um, signed and maintained by Red Hat, so they have professional um, uh, provenance, you might say. Uh, we do create our own kernel there. Uh, the kernel it has the it has a real time patch, so it has a, a, a version of real time capability. Um, I think they talked about that mostly in their last talk, so I'm not going to go into too many details of that. Uh, we also do other projects within the CentOS Automotive SIG, such as Eclipse Blue Chief. Uh, Blue Chief is short for Blue Chihuahua, a name that I desperately wish we could have kept. At least we have the logo, the little blue Chihuahua. Um, this is a uh, a lightweight I suppose you could call it a container orchestration system, but this side of the room is going to start throwing things at me as soon as I say those words, because every time I say it, it's all different. All right, so it, in, this, in essence, it's a container orchestration system based on Podman. So it's based on standard system components that are already there in CentOS and uh, have very low overhead. Um, there was a, an effort early on uh, from another company to uh, try to characterize what Kubernetes would be like if it were running on the cloud. And, um, and uh, it was quickly determined that it used up so many resources by itself that it left not enough to actually run the VSD system. It was using about 20 or 22% of the, of the capacity of the chip. And so that doesn't seem like a great bet. Um, Bluechi, on the other hand, is extremely lightweight. Uh, uses OCI compliant containers. It's all, all very good stuff, and it's maintained in a public foundation underneath Eclipse. So, um, if you like it, come, come to one of the meetings. It's, it's a very interesting discussion. Uh, so, this is kind of the way the, um, the software is developed. Um, this is very similar to the way that Red Hat Enterprise Linux is developed. And you can see RHEL over there on the right. You can see that uh, the Red Hat in-vehicle operating system will follow a very similar path. Um, and uh, the, so essentially the automotive stream distribution within the CentOS SIG is the same is, has the same relationship to the Red Hat in-vehicle operating system, the product, as uh, CentOS stream does to RHEL. I'm going pretty fast here. If anybody has any questions, feel free to jump out, yell, throw at me. Yes. Uh, because there are some rel components that are used in in the red hat in vehicle operating system that's a good question for people back here in the back yes jeff <laughs> yeah go ahead please Yes, sorry. Did you hear that question? Yeah. It'd be the same as rail. It, it'll be the same as rail. So yes, there are lag times because we are not going to uh, break embargo. Right. Now it's important also to realize send the, send the automotive stream distribution, AutoSD, uh, is not intended to actually be run in a car. It is a test bed and a preview of what the Red Hat in vehicle operating system will be. So um, AutoSD doesn't have functional safety certifications, for example, and Rivos is intended to have to be functionally certified. So uh, this is sort of the contribution model that we use with CentOS Automotive SIG. Um, you can kind of see that everything sort of lands in the CentOS Automotive SIG before it moves into the, the product line within, within Red Hat. Um, and this is also the sort of the place where we 
manage a lot of our relationship with these outside organizations, such as ELISA and SOFI and CIPTA. I'm keeping an eye on the time as well, but we'll keep on going. So this is kind of a list of what the CentOS, or what the automotive SIG provides with AutoSD. Uh, you can see we do have the kernel that, that has a real-time patch applied. We have a container runtime. We have uh, over-the-air and security updates, which I think is still kind of a work in progress, at least the OTA tells us. Um, monitoring and diagnostics. And then the things that are outlined in red are the ones that are uh, considered to be uh, applicable to functional safety. So the, the, uh, if, when they are provided within CentOS, they are not considered to be functionally safe. They don't apply to any, they don't, they don't apply a, a certification. But um, certifiable, certainly, that's the idea. Uh, but certification is a very long and complicated process. So um, this is uh, the slide on Bluechi. Uh, Bluechi is, uh, is uh, it's actually being, uh, it's used throughout a, a number of other different demos. Uh, we're working on a demo right now with, uh, with Eclipse SDV and SOFI um, that uses Bluechi. And uh, it's been of great interest because it's a really cool, lightweight workstation. Uh, and built from standard components. There's a great presentation. Uh, you can find it on the Red Hat blog or even just on YouTube just by typing in the uh, blue chi. So uh, this is the this is a this is the slide about the um, the CentOS Automotive SIG community. They're a community, set of community pages with robust documentation, and uh, this is all on sig.centos.org/automotive. If you are looking for it, um, it's all done in GitLab. The uh, the GitLab address is right there if it's not visible. Uh, the um, there are many containers uh, uh, sample images. There are a number of containerized applications and, um, and middleware pieces. In fact, a lot of the Eclipse SDV uh, projects are containerized within, within CentOS, and you can download and run them. And that is 100% um, the work of, uh, not me, <laughs> work of, uh, of Leo Rossetti, who's on the automotive team. And uh, I cannot say enough good things about Leo. So. Uh, there's also a mailing list. There's an active channel on Matrix. And um, there, is, there are monthly meetings uh, the first Wednesday of every month. If you have any desire to join these meetings, please let me know. There's usually some interesting thing. We've got, often got demos or, or st interesting stuff to talk about about the automotive industry. Um, so here's some interesting things that are going on right now within the automotive SIG. Um, we are, uh, like I said, we're working with uh, the SDV Alliance, SOFI, Eclipse SDV, and Autosar, uh, and Covisa towards uh, some shared demos. I believe that those demos are slated for later in the year or possibly the first part of next year. There's a, um, a, a small industry convention that happens in January every year that you might draw A and B and try to figure out that that's probably what we're doing, we're aiming for. That's CES, I think. Uh, there are containerized versions of Eclipse SDV projects. We also have hardware vendors who come to these meetings and work on enabling their hardware within the uh, CentOS Automotive SIG. The latest is Texas Instruments. Their AM69 product is a new chip that they have designed specifically for automotive. And uh, we're very pleased that they chose the CentOS Automotive SIG to expose their, uh, their hardware support with. Uh, we have enabled automotive packages to be included in ELN at the same time that they're updated in Fedora Rawhide, so that should probably uh, shrink some of the lag time that you were talking about, not with CVEs, but lag time from the, auto, from the open source world into, into, uh, the, into CentOS. Um, the group has started the migration towards uh, CentOS Stream 10, because that is coming up very fast. It, the newer kernel will enable a lot of stuff to be, to be happening much more quickly. And in the last meeting we just had uh, in about a week, and a, a week and a half ago, uh, there was a CI operator demonstration. And uh, there's a video for that that uh, will be posted on the documentation page on sig.centos.org. So that's really all I had. Um, and we've actually got like five or six minutes for questions, I think. 
five minutes. Okay, <laughs> okay thank you. <laughs> so, thank you for the presentation. Um, I'm really interested in autoware and uh, getting some experience with that. Is there a group that I can join in or see how that's being used throughout Rivos? Um, and do you know of anyone that's already experimenting with autoware on Rivos? On Rivos, yes. You can actually download the Open AD kit uh, along with the Sophie compatible image in, in, in Autoist. So it's right there. If you just go to sigs.centos.org slash automotive, you'll find it. Um, and it's, it's containerized. Uh, we've been doing a lot of work on, on containerization because that wasn't something that they had originally addressed with their architect. And a follow-on with that, too, is one, does it require any GPU support on the platform that it's running? And then two, I'm coming from a performance uh, background, and uh, does it have an expected uh, output that's saying that it performs well or not so well? Uh, could you elaborate a little bit on that? I am not knowledgeable enough about it to be able to answer, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I, I mostly focus on uh, enabling the relationship that Red Hat has with these outside organizations. But um, talk to Leo, okay. honestly. Get on Matrix and, and just talk to El Rossetti. Uh, he's got all the information about Autoware. He's the one who does most of the work there. Perfect. Thank you so much. They also have mailing lists and, and chat channels and things. It's actually a really interesting organization. Yes. So I wanted to know that uh, currently I think Autosar is used for ECUs. I'm sorry, what was the question? Autosar. Is Autosar? The, yeah, Autosar is used for the, uh, is the, yeah, it's basically, the, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a, a, a closed standard. It's the yeah. reference for a lot of, of, of MCU class devices yeah. within a car. So is Bluetooth working with, like, will it work with that or are you trying to replace it? Bluetooth specifically works with OCI compatible containers. Okay. So if there is if Autosar is deployed as a container as, as an OCI compatible container, I don't see why Bluchi would have a problem with that. So okay, so existing cars can also existing code base can also be used for because all mm -hmm. the code base existing existing code base is made according to Autosar. That's so a that's a good question. There's a lot of legacy software mm -hmm. in this industry that doesn't want to be that, that people aren't going to want to redeploy. Mm -hmm. um, I think containers are going to be an excellent pathway for. I, I don't have any assurances or guarantees from Red Hat about that, but I, I can totally see what you mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So Thank you. Thank you. Are we all set? Any other questions? All right. I'll give you two minutes back. All right. Thank you.